everyone, it's AC Burke here, in for another video, and as you can tell, I'm wearing a blonde mafia t-shirt, if you don't know, this is Bridget and Holly's um, clothing brand, back in the day, and I think they, they re, um, they're, they're doing it again, but back in the Playboy Mansion days, we would wear these, uh, Bridget and Holly came up with this, and it's pretty cool, it has a little girl with a little gun right there, blonde mafia, it's really cool. I probably should have the word strawberry right there because I'm strawberry blonde mafia. Um, and I sell strawberries. I thought I'd poke my head and do a video. Um, you're going to hear my birds chattering. You're going to hear probably the noise outside because we've got a little break in the storm. Thank you, Frankie McDonald, for letting me know about the storm that came. Oh, my God. If you followed on my Instagram and my certain videos, you know that... Um, yeah, it it rained really hard, and I know a lot of people say, oh, California can't handle rain. You're right. We get saturated really easy. Uh, we don't get rain that much, so the grounds get saturated very easy because we have dry and we have uh, winds. We have all this sort of stuff that, that our earth can't handle the moisture, especially that much water at one time. Plus, our storm drains are all clogged up. Every drain's clogged up. We don't have the proper drainage that most people have because some places that deal with rain all the time, their gutters get clean, their drains are fine. They're prepared for that. Everything works good. California, we don't get that much rain, so our streets flood and they, and people drive way too fast. People need to drive slow. I don't care if you're like a little turtle. I'd rather you drive really, really slow and cautious than speed through like a speed demon and then wreck it for all of us. That's main of the reason. A lot of people that drive like it's not raining. It's raining, especially all the oil when the rain comes, all that makes the roads like Anyway, I go on for days. People are just not careful enough. Enough. But. Everything was okay here except for my leaking and my flooding. And for everyone, like, say, oh, you know, Stacy, trust me, I try. It. There's a lot of stories why I'm not leaving this place. I'm, I'm going down the ship. And, and anywhere else I go, I'm going to spend so much money on moving. And, and, and now everything's expensive. I'm not going to be saving that much money if I go anywhere else. I'm grandfathered in. I've been here for so long. Even though my rent's expensive, it would pretty much be expensive anywhere I go. And um, and the leaks and all this stuff, yeah, the landlord knows. And um, yeah, should they fix it? Yeah, but I think I know why. It they it's it's it it, it <laughs> they were like wow. It would just be better to demolish the place, I guess, than because uh, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. And I know they're like, Ugh, you know what I mean? And they're just the owner that, and I can't really blame like the plumber and the property management. It's the owner. He's your typical white male piece of I don't, don't care. He just wants to make money. It's, I'm just a profit to him. And uh, when I'm gone or whenever he hopes, it, he'll probably just demolish it or he'll just sell it. He don't care. He just keeps raising the rent. Even during the pandemic when they were supposed to raise the rent, he found a way. He um, started, he, he raised the rent on my garage. <laughs> he finally goes, he don't care. He don't care. But you know what? He's not the first owner and he won't be the last owner. So I'm hoping that the next owner will care a little more because I've been through a lot of owners. So, like, I stuck around. You know what I mean? So, I think I'll uh, outlast him. You know? You know, I'll outlast him. Because, you know, he's just a gentle little snowflake. Anyway, <laughs> the reason for this video, I was just thinking about um, things in my past. It was like... I don't even know how to start stories. I'm not, this is why I can't write a book. I don't even know where to go. But something brought my brought, you know, so, you know when you start doing stuff and you like remember something in your past, you're like, oh wow. Mm -hmm. 
thing, especially when you got bullied and the person I am now would never take that, but back then I did. And I'm like, oh, I wish I could say something. So this is my chance to say something. Okay, a long time ago, I used, well, I worked a lot of places. <laughs> that could be another video. I gotta remember everything. I, I, I've done so many jobs. Uh, but I used to work at a place called Don Jose's Restaurant. And I don't know if they're around anymore. I think they changed their name to Ricardo's or, Re I don't know, they changed their name. But I worked at a place called Don Jose's Restaurant. And it was really fun. And I started when I was younger. I started, um, well, at that time I had a lot of jobs because God, now I'm going back, back, back. Because when I was 18, when I moved out, I didn't get like a normal apartment. I got a mobile home. I bought a mobile home. So I had a mortgage. So I worked a lot of jobs. I worked round table. I worked the Ramada Inn. I worked uh, Donnie Who's Tried Chicken. Um, I worked a lot of places. Uh, did I say round table? Did I say probably was a round table. Uh, anyway, I, I worked a lot of places, and uh, one of them was Don Jose's restaurant. And I started out as a hostess because I was too young for anything else. And then I went to a waitress, and then I went to appetizer girl, and then I went to cocktail waitress. So as I got older, I went boom, 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 ba -do, ba -do. And um, a lot of people still to this day work there. I heard Juan, the bartender, when I was working there, is still there. I wonder if he's still there. Juan, Juanito. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember anyone's last name, but I think he's the only one that's probably still there. I think he's still a bartender, and I need to go there some of these days. Some of these days. But this was Don Jose's restaurant. And um, I had so much fun. One of the things, though, when I was a hostess and um, I was working there, you know, I was, like, kind of fresh out of high school, kind of. Um, I'm trying to remember the timeline because I worked so many places. And it's like, and I worked for a long time every place, but I worked multiple places at the same time. Because when you're young, that's what you do. Uh, at least that's what I did. And still do, I guess. Um, one of my English teachers walked in and she had lunch there and she looked at me and she, she goes, Stacy, I go, yeah, hi, hi, Mrs. I forget, I think her name was Mrs. Peterson. She was my English teacher and she reminded me of Lauren Bacall. She looked like Lauren Bacall. She was smart. She was stunning. She was striking. Oh my God. And if you don't know me in high school, like, I was a grade A student. Like, I love learning stuff. I got A's in almost everything. Um, geometry, algebra, French. The only thing that got me was, like, earth science and anatomy. Even though I loved anatomy, I wanted to be a doctor. I was like, I loved anatomy, but I just didn't really do that well, I guess. But, um... Anyway, she looked at me and she goes, I can't believe you're working here. And I go, oh, yeah. And she goes, you you could do so much better. You're so smart. You shouldn't be working here. You, you, you just forget the wording she said. But she goes, you're not living up to your potential, basically, that I could be doing better. And I felt like, oh, my God. I mean, first it was kind of like a compliment because she was, like, telling me, like, Honey, you're smart. Because I think I was in MGM at the time. MGM turned into GATE. MGM used to be called Mentally Gifted Minors. And then it changed to GATE, which is Gifted and Talented Education. So I don't know. Back in the day, I guess they did some kind of IQ test. I don't know. And I guess I was pretty up there. Um, like I really could absorb things. Yeah, that was back then. Not now. But um. Or maybe I just stayed the same level. But I was kind of like uh, mentally or, or any, I don't know what you call it. But I was just ahead of everybody else up here. In fact, so much so that I got skipped, a, not a grade, but I skipped in math. They, they, they changed me to just to algebra and geometry. And I never really got to learn. I don't, 
I didn't get to learn basic math. And that's why I still to this to this day I don't know my times tables and the weights and measures and the and the fractions. And that's what I should have learned. Like geometry, which I got A's in, and algebra, which I got A's in. I don't remember anything. I don't remember anything. And I got A's in, in French. I remember a little bit. Like, Rue Philippe, Don La Piscine, Avec Key, Avec An, something like that. I don't know. But it's like, and I, I used to speak fluent French, and I just totally lost. Because also, because I started working at Don Jose's, and then everyone spoke Spanish. So then I started learning Spanish, but I learned it from the bus boys. So not the band, the bus boys, but the bus boys. Uh, they were my friends, and it was like, um, their Spanish was kind of like street slang. It's like almost like if someone came from a different country and worked at some kind of Malibu or some kind of kitchen in, in Huntington Beach or Malibu or, or Hawaii, like, hey, bro. You know what I mean? It would be like someone learning English, but learning like, hey, bro, what up, bro? Gonna get some tasty waves. You know, it's kind of that thing. So I was learning like slang Spanish or Mexican, I guess. I don't know. I could call it Spanish, but it was technically they're from Mexico. So Mexican, I was learning Mexican. Um, but it was so much fun. I love working there. I love working there so much. Um, and there was a few bartenders. One, uh, there was a couple bartenders I dated. Yeah. Uh, but one in particular named Eddie. And, um, I remember I had the mobile home and I had a party or something. It was like, um, like 20, I was turning 21 or something. I don't know. Everyone came. And it was fun. All the people from Don Jose's came. But Eddie brought, like, he goes, can you put this in your, in your back bedroom for me? And it was a duffel bag. I go, there. And he goes, because there's a gun in there. And I look, and sure enough, there's a gun. I'm like, woo! You know what I mean? Like, me and guns are like, nah. Especially, I'm like Barney Fife. I'm accident prone. Why did you put give this gun to me to hide or to put away? Like, why, why are you bringing it? Like, what the hell and so i just like was literally carrying the bag like this and put it somewhere and hit it because i was just like ah scared and then um we kind of flirted and stuff and it was kind of odd because he was freshly married but i guess he was having problems i don't know what's going on with his relationship but um they eventually got divorced and stuff like that they were like you know but we were flirting Kind of hooked up. Uh, of course, he was older than me and stuff. But I, he had this other bartender friend that worked there. His name was Craig. And he was kind of a bodybuilder type of guy. And he had a girlfriend that would come visit him all the time. And I was really good friends. That's Dusty running down the, the halls. He's running. This is cute. Playing. I was really good friends with Eddie's soon to be ex wife sister. All old amounts and all. Because Eddie was married to this one girl and this girl had a sister. And I forget her name. But she worked at Don Jose's as well. And so we started hanging out a lot. We got along really well. He didn't know I was kinda hooking up with Eddie. I felt really bad because, you know, she was the sister, you know, the sister of his soon to be ex wife. So I wanted, you know, keep it on the down low. But a lot of times we would hang out at the parking lot. We would, we would chill. Well, Craig, for some reason, didn't like me. I think because he knew that I was hooking up with Eddie. And his girlfriend did not like me. I'm assuming it's because I was hooking up with Eddie. So much so, they would bully me really bad. Because I used to wear false eyelashes back then. In fact, my eyelashes were so weird. I was beyond weird. Like, this was kind of normal. But what, back in the day, I wore some weird-ass shit. And my eyelashes weren't normal eyelashes. I would wear, like, they were they were lace. 
and they're black lace and they have like little eyelets to them and they're just kind of different. And I wore, I wore eyelashes all the time. I like fake eyelashes because I've always liked the 1960s look and I like a lot of mascara and putting on a lot of mascara, which brings me to another girl I knew from Don Jose, so it would spend an hour doing mascara and her eyes look like spiders. And she wore so much mascara, probably a tube a day, I'm not even kidding. And I forget her name as well. She also went through a lot of Aquanet. But um, anyway, I, I always wear these eyelashes and he would bully me so much. And one of the things they would see would say to me, while we're in the parking lot, I'm trying to be nice to everyone, but I know they hate me and they're bullying me. And I'm like, hmm, acting sweet and stupid that I, I'm so appalled that I, I did that. But um, she would say this to me. She goes, if I slap you hard enough, would your eyelashes fall off? <laughs> and she kept would saying that. And I just looked at her blankly because there's no proper way to answer that. Say, yes, if you, hit, if you slap me hard enough, my eyelashes would fall off. Or no, they won't. In other words, you're going to slap like. Am I going to invite you to slap me to find out? But she kept repeating that to me. Whenever she said, if I slap you hard enough, would your eyelashes fall off? And yet I would hang out with them like, <laughs> like party and, you know, have a bottles and James in the parking lot and just and laugh. And then they were, it was like high school, you know, when the quarterback in, in his, um, his cheerleader girlfriend would sit on the back of the truck and just kind of make fun of you. But yet you're hanging with the cool kids. So you're trying to be like, mm. you know, you're trying to be like, you just want to be one of the cool kids. I can't believe I was like that. But I was, I was an idiot. At least they never told my friend about me and Eddie hooking up. And that didn't last long. It was just like a few hookups and that was about it. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's like, it was like, it's just a bully thing. And then it got to the point where even Eddie started bullying me and he was just mean. And then like, he was a bartender. So I was a waitress and I, and a lot of times when you got to get drinks for the table and you're trying to rush because you're got to get, make sure that you got to get the drinks before the food comes out. And you're like, and you're waiting and. You know, your aunt's saying, you know, bartenders kind of like to play the game. Like, oh, you know, like, just, you know, you tip out and stuff. And I tip good. But he was just playing games with me, like taking a time, taking his time, making the drinks for my table. And I'm like, come on, Eddie, come on. I'm like, please, please, please. And, like, he got the water. You know how he used to squirt, like, you know, when you do, like, the soda, it's like a hose. He sprayed my face. And of course, I have eyelashes. They didn't fall off, thank God, because I don't know how to glue them on good. But, like, just like, and he thought it was so funny. He thought it was so funny. And, you know, I was such a, a good little a hookup girlfriend that one time, um, this is how good I was. And this is what makes me so mad. I was so nice to him. Like, before I was leaving, I, I go, well, I'm out of here, Eddie. Bye. And he goes, oh, I'm craving a nice steak just before I was vegan. Oh, I'm craving a nice steak. I'm like, oh, okay, Eddie. So what I did was I went home. Well, first I went to the store, bought some stuff, went home, cooked him a steak. With, and that time I was doing steak with um, a marinated in soy sauce and oregano and garlic. That was my thing. Soy sauce, oregano, and garlic. I should do that with my vegan steaks. It so it was really good. And I put them in the broiler, and I made them a baked potato. All the fixings. And I th I'm trying to think what else. Maybe a salad. I cooked him a, a meal. I put it on a plate. I did the foil, and I came back. And I go, Eddie, I heard you're in a mood for a, a, a steak. He goes, Yeah. And I gave it to him. He goes. Oh my God! They took one bite of it out. Oh my God! Oh yeah, butter. That's another thing. I sauteed the steak in butter. He was like in heaven. That's how good of a girlfriend I am. Even after putting up all that with bullying. But that's just a few stories from the Don Jose era. 
Like we had, when I was a cocktail waitress, I remember a band coming in and um, we would have cover bands sometimes. And one of the bands was a cover band for In Excess. And the, the guy looked like Michael Hutchings. Michael Hutchings? So cute. So whenever he would play, I would hook up with him. I would hook up with him. He was so cute. So cute. One time when I took him back to my place, he was still sleeping. This is what I do. That's what I do. I, I went to the store and I got chorizo. I got um, some potatoes and I got salsa. And I think I got, I don't know. I just got the whole fixes. I made chorizo, eggs, potatoes, and tortillas. And then when he woke up, he smelled it. And he's like, woo, in the morning. He's like, oh, honey. It's just, you know, it's because raised with my grandparents, you know. It's like, you know, when you care for someone, you cook for them. And you do, it's just what I do. I still do this to this day. Like, I'll, I'll feed, I'll feed, you know, who I care about. I'll feed them, you know. Like, I'll feed them. I'll do the, and I don't mind doing the dishes. I don't mind doing the cleaning. I really don't mind it. I love it. To me, it's like love. So, um, yeah, he was, I think, what else? <laughs> when I was a cocktail waitress at Don Jose's, oh, my God, when the bands would play, and, like, and I'm carrying, like, okay, they do margaritas. This is a Mexican restaurant, so this is, like, big old margaritas. Strawberry margaritas were really in right then. And sometimes you can carry the tray up, and then there are people, so you can carry it above everyone's head. You know, being short, sometimes that doesn't work out. So if someone's too tall for me to carry above their head, I would carry like this, and then I would do this, you know, you know, to make sure the drinks would fall from my tray. Although there'll be this one guy that likes to play games and stop and start, and this guy was wearing all white, and I couldn't get by him. And I go, excuse me, because I had a strawberry margarita. He's wearing all white, and he's playing games, and I'm like, Okay. Whoops. Oh, no. The strawberry margarita went, oh, my God, and you're wearing all white. I'm so sorry. Yep. I dumped it all on him. And he's like, oh, my God. But then I just chucked it up. I go, oh, sorry, guys. I need another margarita. He bumped into me. He did. He did bump into me. I probably could have saved the margarita. He bumped into me. I probably could have saved the margarita, but I did not. I'm trying to think other stories. If I run out, maybe I'll do some more Don Jose stories. I, I gotta think of my other job stories. I can only think about them when they happen. Um, but yeah, I broke my knee during the Don Jose's. We had a Don Jose's employee party. And it was like as a Justo's house or Gusto, because there's Justo and Gusto. There's a lot of Gustos, a lot of wands. Java. Uh, I think other ones. Java, wands, Gusto, and Gusto. Um, Ruben. Hmm. Anyway. It was an employee party, and um, I love to dance. And they're dancing to salt and pepper push it. And I guess I pushed it. Because when I was dancing, this might be a little gross. It was gross to me. When I was dancing, I felt it and I saw it. My knee went, whoop, and it went right back in. My knee. It was disgusting. I fell, I yelled in pain, I spent the rest of the party on the couch with an ice on me, and my knee swelled up, it was this knee, it was this, I'm trying to remember, the reason I can't remember, you'll hear the story, um, I didn't do anything about it. It was hard for me to drive. My knee did not stop swelling. 
So I just bandaged it up, and I still went to work waitressing, carrying the tray. I felt like I love Lucy, you know, when you have a broken leg and you're still walking. Did whatever I need to do. Did whatever I need to do. Could it? Yeah, it must have been this knee because I could still use this one for the gas and the brake so I could drive. Yeah, it's this knee. Did that for a few weeks, still swollen, wouldn't go down, wore a knee brace. All of a sudden, this knee went out, swollen. So I put a knee, knee brace on that one. And then now I have two knee braces and I can't bend my knees. So I'm walking like this, doing the tray, going like this, working another week. The main manager, I guess, slash owner comes in. He's like, Stacy, what are you doing? I go, what? I'm working. You can't come back to work until you get a doctor's note. You got to go to the doctor right now. I'm like, no, you know me. No, please, please. No, go. Damn it. Damn it. Had to go to the doctor. They drained my knees, first of all, which was Chris. Gives me the willies. They put a needle between the patella and they drain the fluid. Oh my God. You have no idea. Because I can't handle that. I was going pins and like it felt like creepy crawlies all through me. Like I but I had to do it. They made me do it. So they drained the fluids. And they told me I had to go to physical therapy because what happened was, okay, there's tenants, there's the, the knee, the patella, there's tenants going, tendons going down the knee. I busted my tendons. They're, they're still there, but they said it's like an elastic band. Once elasticity goes, they're just loosey-goosey and not holding the knee together. That's why my, my patella, when I put lotion on, the patella would slide out and have to pack it back in. They said, it's nothing's holding the knee together. You either have to go to surgery to cut the tendon and shorten it to hold the knee in, or go to physical therapy and strengthen the muscles around your knee to hold your knee in place. Well, I opted for that. Because I go, okay, but then will I lose flexibility? Nowadays it can be different, but I'm talking back in the day, this is what they told me. I'm sure you guys are saying, well, nowadays you can, well, nowadays you can probably more stuff, but back then this is what, this is how it was. So I go, okay, plus I didn't want to do surgery. Just what's the best option to get back to work? I need to get back to work. So they physical therapy. So I had to go to the physical therapy. They um, they put me in a whirlwind. What do you call it? A bath, like a, like a cold. You know how you do the ice plunge now? Well, you did that, but I had to put my knees in. You go in the ice plunge, and then you go in the warm plunge. Then you go the ice plunge and the warm plunge. It's like a whirlpool. You did both. Another thing they do the electrodes. They put electrodes on your knees, and it makes your muscles like work. Like it gets, you could, it would go dull and then they go sharper, 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 and then it'd be slow pulsating and then it would pulsate. And so it would do that. And then they taught me certain exercises to do every day that I do to this day. To this day, I still do my physical therapy exercises because if I do not, still to this day, if I'm putting lotion on my knee, my patella will slide. or I will be walking and I can feel the bone on bone. That's another thing. I take MSM. I take uh, that main or whatever you call it. You take all that stuff in your knees. And yes, when it rains, it hurts. You get arthritis in the knees and all that. Um, but I do the physical therapy to this day. And I wore knee braces for the longest time. And still to this day, like when I'm doing certain exercises and you're supposed to keep your knees straight. Because I get called out on this a lot. When I do certain things, you're supposed to keep your knees straight. They go, your knees aren't straight. And I, and I feel like saying, well, I can't. Because if I if I lock my knees, 
my patella slides and 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 I could I could get really injured. I got to keep my knees bent at all times and it's almost impossible to have my knees not bent anymore. They per, per, they will always be a little bit bent. I can never do them really straight and if I accidentally do them straight, they, instead of going straight, they, they go that way. You know what I mean? Like since I had a knee injury, my knees are always kind of like this. But if I do them straight, I run the risk. And first of all, it's hard for me to go straight. It, it really is. It's almost like arthritis. You can't go straight. But if I do and I try, and there's been times, my knees go opposite and it locks up and it hurts. And I can't afford to go to the doctor. As you know, I don't have health insurance. And even if I did have health insurance, I don't want to go to the doctor. I don't want to deal with that stuff. So I'm very careful with my knees. I'm very careful with my knees. So still to this day, I do my knee exercises to keep my muscles strong because there's nothing you can do for the tendons. Once the tendons, I know I'm saying it wrong, the tendons, the, once they lose elasticity, it's over. So the only thing holding my knee together is muscle. So I got to make sure they're muscular. And I try not to lock my knees because there has been times when I try to straight when I stretch or when I try try to make my knees straight, which hurts. But if I try, sometimes I'll go the other way like that. Oh, that does not feel good because it's bone on bone. Like we you know what I mean. Like you're like it hurts so bad. So that's how it, this video is kind of getting long. There's a lot of stories. This is just Don Jose's. This is Don Jose's. There's just like, they, they were just a kind of a cool group of people that, you know, when I was young, so I was getting older through that. And I, I love being the cocktail waitress there. I love being the appetizer girl. Appetizer was kind of girl. That's when you can work the bar, but you're not really of age yet. You're not 21 yet. They can still work the bar doing the appetizers, but you still wear the skimpy little skirts and the high heels. And um, the waitressing was fun, except there was one time I got schooled. A few times, if, if you're a waitress, you know, there's been a few times where I got no tip and it said, like, get a better job. Oh, yeah, I had one of those where they didn't give me a tip. They said, just get a better job. I've had people leave me a couple pennies up on a big table. Mm -hmm. And I know I gave good service. And actually, I followed them in the parking lot. I threw the pennies at them when I got reprimanded, but I didn't get fired. People people who worked there for years and years, they're kind of like forgiving. It was a Mexican family, so it was like, yeah, that was, I like that. Um, and then I remember these two women, when I gave them the bill, and I was about to put it on the table, one woman goes, give the bill to the woman that looks most affluent and I looked at them I'm all I'm sorry I don't know what that means and they looked at each other and they go we thought not just put it on the table and so I go back to the kitchen and uh I asked I asked everyone I go what does affluent mean and then they told me and I go all these and then I told them about the woman I go the woman said on oh, they're like oh my god that is such an insult how dare they? And I was so mad. That's what they said to me. Like, if you know, you know, like, you know, certain things that they, that you have to deal with being a server, which sucks because it's a job. What do you like? I don't know. I don't understand. I think everyone in high school, everyone in school should, every, everyone should work at a job that does serving and stuff like that. Cause you learn so much about people. That is just rude. That is just rude. That is just get a better job. Okay, I'll get a better job. The, the next server you're going to say the same thing to? Doesn't make sense. Oh, well, people are learning after the pandemic, huh? Can't, can't find workers these days. Yeah, because you treat us like crap. Another thing, I was learning Spanish one time. And, um... Well, I, I, I'm always learning. I love learning, but um, at that time I was really trying to really learn. And um, now let me make sure I got this right. But um, and I was, I was so busy, and I was trying to get things done, trying to get things done. And um, 
I need the glasses. And there's no glasses. They're all not out of the dishwasher yet. And I go, now, basos and basos. I go, necesito basos. Necesito basos. Ahora. Necesito. Ahora. Por favor. Necesito basos. Everyone stopped. They go, en serio? I'm like, yes. And then they go, Stacy. I'm like, no, baso, baso, no, baso. In case you don't know, baso means I need a kiss. And baso, I think I've gotten it right, is glasses. So that's a story on that one. I'm trying to think of other stories. Like, there's so many stories from that place. Like, oh, my God. I'm going to have to tell you a story. But remind me about um, when I was dating this bartender. And he went away to Illinois, and he, and, and he had his car left in the airport. And me and my boyfriend jump-started it, and my boyfriend sold it <laughs> without the pink slip. <laughs> I don't know why I'm still alive. Why am I still alive? There's so many stories. It was this crazy, crazy times. I'm trying to think other ones. Oh, the manager. Okay, I was, okay, it's another party, a ploy party. There was one girl, me and Maria. Me and Maria, I, she was such a cool chick. She was a hostess. And we're at a party, and uh, I go outside. She's outside smoking a cigarette. And I go, Maria, what are you doing? She goes, I gotta go home. I go, what do you gotta go? I gotta go. And I they're make my parents are making me go. And I go, why? You say because I'm 13. I'm like, what the hell? 13? Get the <laughs> And I push her in the car. You shouldn't even be here. Get home. <laughs> and after work, we would just sit together and we would laugh and we had the worst sense of First of all, she had road rage so much. Driving a car would be crazy. After when she was, because we were friends for a long time, so when she turned 16, when she would drive, she was crazy. And we would stay after hours, and we I would just make her crack up. We'd call each other queeve. If you know what queeve is, it's a piece of heart. And I go, you're a queeve nugget. And she goes, well, you're a queeve cheese. You're Dale Queeve Cheeve Nuggets. You're Queeve Cheeve Nuggets. You're Queeve Powder from the underwear. You're Queeve Cottage Cheese. And we just kept, uh, we would go up and up and try to get more disgusting and gross. And then sometimes I just crack up and she'd crack up and then we'd get back at it. Well, you're, you're the, you're Queeve Parmesan after you scrape it off the back, your, your <laughs> underwear. We would just go off and off and off about calling each other Queeb Nugget, Queeb Cheese, um, Queeb uh, Stain. Uh, I, I, I could think of more, but you, you get the gist, right? You get the gist. And we would just try to outgrow each other, and it was so funny. But later on, she started dating the manager, Gusto. And, um, and since, well, she was... By then, she was probably 17 or 18 by then. Yes, we worked there for a long time. Um, and, uh, yeah, she had to be 18. She had to be 18. Um, yeah, wow, I did look, work there for a long time. Well, we figured out. I, I did hostess, and then I went to waitress. Then, you know, so I, yeah, I worked there for a long time. I loved it. Um, she hooked up with them, and so she... I think she still lived at home. And um, so she would use my, um, she goes, do you need your mobile home? Can't you go away for a few hours? I'm like, oh, God, are you going to hook up with Gusto? Yeah. I'm like, damn it. Okay. And so um, <laughs> you use my mobile home. And then the times I want to get home, I'm tired. And I drive by, I see his truck, and I'm like, damn it. This before cell phones, and I would just drive around until they're done. I'm like, are you finished? Like, not in my bed. Not. I don't know what they did. I don't know. But she would hook up. She would use my mobile home. Oh, I got 
tell you stories. But this video is getting long. This video is getting long. I'll tell you more stories later. I'll tell you more stories later. Let me tuck you in. Let me give you your teddy bear. But Don Jose's was fun. Oh, and then, yeah, that one girl I was telling you about that did the eyelashes like this. We used to do lingerie shows. Uh, she's the one that got me into it, I think, before I got my own business doing lingerie shows, which I have done a video before where I'm the lingerie model. Just go to that video. But lingerie shows back in the day is you go to a lady's house, and I had my business later, but I would go to a lady's house, pick up the lingerie, the caboodle with all the raffle tickets, and you go to like Bobby McGee's or, or Texas Lucy's or whatever establishment. You'd model laundry, go to each each booth, tell them what sizes it comes in, what colors it comes in, how much it is, but you sell raffle tickets. And at the end of the fashion show, whoever wins the raffle ticket, well, first of all, you get a Polaroid with a picture with the girl. That's, I think, second place. And the first place gets the laundry item boxed up, whatever size they want, whatever color they want, and stuff like that. Um, and then what you do, then when all the money and all the stuff you take back to the lady and she'd give you $20 an hour for whatever, for that gig. So that gig back then was a pretty good gig, you know? Um, and I talked more about, just look, Google my, my video. I was a lingerie model. It gives more details about that. But she worked at Don Jose's and she used to put hairspray this big. And she was funny. She was funny. Um, oh, my God. But we'd go places at laundry shows, and then we'd go to a restaurant later. And then, um, of course, she would flirt. She was, people were always better at flirting than I was. I, but she would flirt. And i go, what are you doing? She goes, stay here. I'm going to get my electric bill paid. I'm like, okay. And my soda. She would go talk to some guy at a table for, like, maybe 20 minutes. Come back. She goes, Electric bill paid. I'm like, what? Yeah. And I'm like, I was never that talented. But there's girls. Um, they have talent. Got electric bill paid. Um, what was I gonna say with that? Oh, she had a thing about when I went to her house one time, and her table was filled with empty boxes of laxatives. I guess she, she just did laxatives. She would eat, like she had a good figure. Like, you know, she was like really thin, but yet she was voluptuous here, voluptuous here, but she had a good waist. But she would do so much laxative. Another girlfriend of mine that used to do a lot of laxatives too. I used to hang out with her. And I remember seeing her with a bunch of laxatives. Like, I wonder if they're okay now. Like this was a lot, like the tables filled the correct all or the pink boxes of correct all and she would just take laxatives so i never understood i mean sure i like to eat but that means you're on that toilet for a long time and that's not fun how is that fun and then you don't know what's going to happen unless they got it i don't know unless they they got it all timed up or maybe it takes that much when maybe they get immune to it and it takes that much laxatives to get through them. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong, I have taken laxatives for that reason, but not like to that level. Like literally, if I had a photo shoot, I would literally cut it in half. And I would take half a laxative, but I would have to do it like a day before because I never knew when it was gonna work. But I would take half, half a laxative before a photo shoot. But it wasn't like continuous. You know what I mean? And it wasn't a full thing of laxative. Not to where there's boxes. You know. And still this day, if I, you know, I'm feeling uncomfortable, I will take. But I literally, I have a box of them there that's been there for like 10 years. Because I do cut them in half. Because a full laxative danger zone. I have to cut them in half. So... I don't know, but yeah, there's a lot of girls that used to do a lot to laxative. And I'm sure there's probably girls that still, I just didn't think that was fun. Like that's only like break fast in case of emergency when you need it, really need it. You know what I mean? When you really need it. So 
And I'm, yeah, I think I remember also when I used to, when I was an anemic, I was anemic one time. I used to eat a lot of ice. Cloudy ice was my favorite because it would break like powder. It was just like, mmm, so tasty. You could taste the minerals. And someone told me, you're anemic. And so I had to get on iron. But iron makes you constipated. So whenever I would do iron, I would break the laxative into fours. And I would drink I eat one fourth of the laxative as I took an iron. Which probably just, now thinking about it, just probably made the iron not absorb. Huh? But that's what I did because the doctor said, you are going to get constipated if you take iron. And I go, okay. And then I remember the laxative. I go, oh, well, if I cut the laxative in fourth and take it with the iron. And then so I, I was fine. And the doctor at the time said, oh, that's smart. Okay. He even told me, like, oh, that's smart. That's fine. <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe I did absorb it. I don't know. I'm fine now. But I was very anemic. I was very anemic. And one of the things was because if you crave ice, especially the cloudy ice with all the minerals, yeah, I would just eat. I would get full on ice. I would just crunch ice all the time. I would just eat ice. I loved ice. Okay, well, this video is getting long. I'll tell more stories later. I'm going to tuck you all in. Let me tuck you in. Where's your teddy bear? Look at your teddy bear. <laughs> all right. I don't know where this video went. It just went all over the place. But I know the video is getting long, and I try not to keep it too long. But I'll turn on the video. I'll turn on the camera again, and I'll talk later about more stories. But, um... I need to go see if Juan's still at, at Don Jose's. I got still. I heard he's still there. I just don't know what day, what time. I would love to go. To, my favorite was a number three. It was an enchilada, chiliano, rice and beans, and I would take a lemon, and I would squeeze tons of lemon, tons of lemon all over it, and then I put Tabasco all over it. And then I would get the chips and the salsa, and I use it as a dip. I wouldn't eat the chiliano enchilada rice and bean platter by itself. And of course, you have some lettuce, shredded lettuce, so much lemon, so much Tabasco. And then I'd get the chips, and I would scoop, 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 eat, scoop, eat. Yeah, I did gain weight. Obviously, I gained weight. And then I fluctuated, you know, like I, I, I always fluctuate, but yes, I did gain a lot of weight. I gained a lot of weight because, you know, it's all like that at that time was probably lard, you know, and I didn't use a fork. I used the chips and there's been times where I ate the whole thing and they're like, you ate all that? I'm like, yep, I sure did. There's something about pizza. I like mixed meat. I think it's the tomato sauce. I love tomatoes. Like, if you put tomato sauce on something, I'll eat the whole thing. I'll eat the whole damn thing. <laughs> and I have, I remember even round table. One time I ordered, um, I would try different things. And pastrami and tomato was kind of like my favorite. And I ate, I ordered a medium pastrami and tomato pizza. It was vegan. And yes, I ate the whole thing. I ate the whole damn thing. Yeah. That's where I was young. I was able to do it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I did gain weight, but I could easily lose it. Like, in other words, like, oops, I gained three pounds. I just won't eat for one day, and I'll be back to normal. And I would. All I had to do was fast for one day, and I'm back to normal. <laughs> That's why I don't weigh myself. Back then, I used to weigh myself, so... I'd be, like, very cautious. I don't do that. As long as I feel good, I look good, my clothes fit because I don't want to buy new clothes. I haven't weighed myself in probably 30 years. No, I shouldn't say that. Probably, I keep saying that now. is Because when I was still at the Playboy Mansion, because we used to have a, a, a gym, and there was a, 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 one of those old-fashioned weights. And after, there was one time when I'm like, you know what, I'm not doing this anymore. So. It had to. It had to have been. Well, it could have been uh, twenty-two years ago, because two thousand two. I could have stopped weighing myself in two thousand two. So uh, maybe twenty-two years ago. I haven't. I haven't weighed. In fact, even when I don't go to doctors, but even when I did, when I when I had to, 
when I got food poisoning, and they, they make you weigh yourself, I would, I would tell the doctor, like, don't tell me, write it down, I don't want to see, or cover it up, I don't want to know, and they cover my ears, so I, I have not weighed myself in over 20 years, probably 22 years, I've weighed myself, or even if I did weigh myself, I didn't look at the number. That's probably more truthful. I never looked at the number. I've never acknowledged my weight. The last time I weighed myself was 99 pounds, and I'm sticking to it. All right, I'm going to end that video here because it's getting really late. So this is my video. I'll tell you more stories when I can think of them. Follow my other videos too because sometimes I just, I'm on my phone, and I know I do it this way, and I just I just say certain things, and I post videos of just my random thoughts and random things I say. So follow that too, you know, if you're interested in all that crap. All right, so I guess I'm going to wrap it up. Until next time, follow me on everything, all the social media, all the links below, okay? All the links are down below, stacyburke.com. In case you don't see the link, stacyburke.com, S T A C Y B U R K E dot com. And everything's there. All right. And shout out to my girls. Yay, Blonde Mafia, Bridget and Holly. And they got a good podcast too, Girls Next Level. Until next time. To all my Stace Cadets and all my Burkettes, I hope you have a groovy day. Until next time, peace.